Hey everyone, Dr. Larson here. This video we're talking about the eight causes of gallbladder disease. Now I have another video, uh, very popular on YouTube. It's the 17 symptoms of gallbladder disease. But this one we're talking about more of the causes. What's kind of the underlying roots of this? Now there's going to be more than eight of course, but I'm going to show you eight today. Now they're in no specific order, but the first one we'll talk about is constipation. So if you're not moving your bowels fast enough. If they're not, if that transit time is called from when you eat the food to when it leaves your body as waste, if that's too slow, you're going to start to develop gallbladder issues because your gallbladder has to squeeze and contract when food moves through that GI tract. Now a lot of people get confused as to what constipation is. You need to move your bowels at least one time a day. So you might be regular at every three days or every seven days or whatever it might be for you and you might think that you're regular but you need to be moving your bowels at least one time a day. Now I have a different video that I talked about my first like six months in practice I had a young, a young woman come in she was diagnosed with an autoimmune condition called Graves disease where it affects your thyroid gland and she was going every two weeks so she had horrible constipation I mean terrible constipation and what it ended up being was it contributed to basically causing her to have Graves disease because once we got her bowels moving within 30 days all of her Graves disease markers were gone. Now I didn't treat Graves disease in her whatsoever I just helped her get her bowels moving and it was like a miracle everything went away the MDs no longer wanted to irradiate her thyroid gland and kill it all because she was constipated now here are symptoms of constipation, hard dry stools, pain, uh, just going infrequently, like I said, like every seven days, every two weeks, every other day, whatever, uh, bloating, and then incomplete evacuation. So if you go and you feel, gosh, you know, I, I, didn't, I don't feel like it's all gone, all of these are symptoms of constipation. And a lot of people get confused on what constipation really is. Uh, number two. One of my real pet peeves is this one. I have videos on um, hydrochloric acid in the stomach, look those up. But antacid use, whether it's by prescription or whether it's over the counter, you can't be stopping your acid. The vast, 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 vast majority of people who have GERD, heartburn, acid reflux are not making too much acid. They have too little acid in the stomach and it's creating symptoms secondarily. Look up the other videos on that. But antacid use, because when you start food in the stomach, right, and you're breaking the food down, that food in the stomach has to move through down and into the small intestine. And it's right there in the upper part of the small intestine where you need the right chemicals in there. You have to have more of an acid solution, which is the opposite of this, right? You have to have more of an acid solution for your gallbladder to contract and squirt its contents out, squirt the bile into the um, upper part of the small intestine. But if you're taking antacids, it's, it slows or stops that process. It's not occurring. So now you get gallbladder issues. You get a gallbladder that's not functioning anymore because it's not being triggered to release its contents. Antacid use. Number three, food reactions. Now I could have said food allergies, food sensitivities, um, you know, whatever. Food reactions is a term that I like the best and there's lots of reasons why people are having food reactions but the bottom line is that they are extremely common so if your body is always irritated to this it's going to end up irritating your gallbladder as well uh, too so here's some common food reactions we have gluten, corn, soy, dairy, eggs and peanuts and why are these the most common? because these are the most common things that people are eating so gluten, uh, wheat, barley oats, rye, these all have forms of that in there. Um, so we have wheat, we have dairy, we have eggs, the ingredients for French toast, right? So, and corn and soy are in everything because the government subsidizes it, so it's in almost everything out there. Um, and then peanuts are becoming a big allergy as well. We won't go into that one, but these are common foods. These are in all the packaged foods out there. Dairy is what people commonly eat gluten and eggs. So people are having food reactions. Now how do you figure out if you have one? 
The slow way is the elimination diet. And you have to go off of this for at least a two, three weeks. You can't just stop a food and then two, three days later think, you can try it again and see what happens. You have to give your body time to purge all those chemicals out of the body. So you, you go on the elimination diet, you take out all these foods, two, three weeks, and then you enter them back in. It's not rocket science. See how, you know, track how your body feels. If you have, you've got a headache or diarrhea or all of a sudden you're constipated or whatever pains you have or some joint pains come back, that's the elimination diet. Now that's really, really slow. It's, it's one way of doing it. Now in my office, the way I do it is I use muscle response testing. So we have little vials uh, in my treatment room that has the foods in them. And we use muscle response testing with a muscle, a strong muscle. They hold the food in their hand. The energy of that interacts with their body and that muscle goes weak. I use the fingers and the hands usually. The muscle will go weak. It's amazing, right? A lot of people are just stunned the first time they see it. But it's a quick, painless, easy, and highly accurate way of figuring out what foods are reacting with that person's body. Now, um, I'll probably get, get this question, so I'll just address it now. The tests that I don't like are the blood test. They're, they, I've seen them be like, you, you take one test, you do another one right after it, and they're totally different results. So, plus you're also looking for more of like a food allergy where your body has made an actual immune complex to that. So by far the best way I found, muscle response testing. But the elimination diet does work as well if you don't have a practitioner. Number four is hypothyroid, which is low thyroid. Now, I see a lot of low thyroid patients in my office. I don't treat them for low thyroid, I treat the person, right? I always treat the person. What interferences do they have? But low thyroid is a really, really big one because your thyroid sets your metabolism. So if your thyroid's low, everything about your body is low. So you have a sluggish body, you have sluggish cells, you have a sluggish brain, you have a sluggish colon, you have a sluggish gallbladder, liver, everything is sluggish because every cell in your body has receptor sites for thyroid hormone. So if you're low in that hypothyroid, everything is sluggish. So that's why I just say sluggish body. So sluggish colon. What does that lead to? Constipation. What does that lead to? Gallbladder issue. See, it's a, it's a vicious circle. Everything works together. Now also, thyroid hormone relaxes the sphincter of OD, it's called. Now the sphincter of OD controls dumping of bile in the small intestine. So remember how I said from the stomach, the food goes into the upper small intestine, and it's right there that we have a duct that comes in and it looks like this. So I drew this picture on my whiteboard that's over here. Hopefully you can see it's a little bit dark on the top, but here's our esophagus. See if we can see that on there or not, I don't know. Um, here is the stomach and here is the small intestine. So the blue part is the, is the GI tract. We have the liver here, the gallbladder, the, the bile ducts that come out of the uh, liver. And then the common bile duct here. The pancreas will be in here as well. Sphincter of Odie is right here. So if you don't have enough thyroid hormone, this sphincter gets constricted and tight. So if you have enough thyroid hormone, it relaxes this sphincter how it's supposed to. That's right where the sphincter is. Right in the upper part of that small intestine. Right? Remember stomach, small intestine here. It goes through all of that, then it goes to the large intestine. But if you, if you have hypothyroid, not only do you have a sluggish body in general, but this sphincter doesn't want to, work, want, want to work right either. So you have to have proper testing as well for your thyroid gland. You have to get all the tests. There's 10 of them. Not two, not three. There's 10, right? You need all of them to properly evaluate your whole thyroid gland. Uh, number five, not drinking enough water. Need I say more? People don't drink enough water. They, they pound coffee like crazy or different types of sugared beverages, uh, carbonated ones. And it just dehydrates you. Water is the universal solvent. It's what keeps everything thin. So you need to keep the gallbladder contents thin. The bile needs to be thin. It doesn't need to be all congested and congealed, right? And it needs to be thin all the way through here. Mucus in your sinuses, in your GI tract, wherever it might be, needs to be thin. Water is really, really important. So half your body weight in ounces is a good uh, starting point there. Number six, not exercising enough. It's the E word, the dreaded E word. It might as well be the F word. 
I, I, I say this all the time because people don't like to exercise. We're very sluggish. We're very, a very sedentary society because of the things that, are, that, that we're doing. Now, there are a percentage of the population that exercises. There's a huge part of it that does not. So if you're not moving your body, getting your lymph system moving, getting your muscles moving, your gallbladder is going to be sluggish, your colon is going to be more sluggish, and it all feeds right back in again. So exercise is so important. Number seven is dysbiosis. Um, what is this one? Here it is. A state of altered microbial, microbial ecology, so microbes. And these are chronic ones, not like acute ones where you have to have an antibiotic for a high-powered drug or something. We work with this a lot in my office. I don't treat them. I help the body to remove these things naturally. And so many people are infected with all kinds of things. If you look at my video, my parasite story video, I was infected with roundworms for probably 30 years. Had no idea. And I finally figured it out, cleared them out, and everything changed for me. Everything. Because I got rid of the microbes. So microbes are huge. Parasites, bacteria, yeast, virus, things like that. And then we have number eight, the last one on this list anyways, is heavy metals and other chemicals. Heavy metals can slow down your GI tract alone. Copper can do that. So we have mercury, lead, copper, aluminum, cadmium, and there's more. I find uranium in people all the time. So heavy metals, chemicals like formaldehyde, toluene, benzene, all of these chemicals also impact the GI system as well. And you might say, well, I don't have that, do I? Most likely you do. Every single person out here has chemicals in their body um, just by the environment that we live in and the cars that we drive and everything that we're exposed to. Now, the basics. On these videos, I get a lot of phone calls, emails from people. Um, they want to know, well, what, what should I take for this? What should I do? And I wanted to give you some, some answers here. You can find all these products I'm going to say on shoplarsonwellness.com. I built that uh, website for my patients so that they could get, you know, pe people who, who were out of state could get the right products but other people are ordering from that as well. But the basics, you gotta start with the basics first. These aren't directly for the gallbladder, but they're for the causes of some of the gallbladder issues. So the first one is pink salt. My favorite salt is this, Premier Pink Salt. We have it on the website. So important. Salt is an amazing nutrient. It's a necessary nutrient. You need it, but you don't need the white stuff that you get in the stores. You need salt that's real. And yes, there are other pink salts and other sea salts and things in the stores. They're not quite as good. There's other reasons for that. This one is by far the best. You will be happy with it. I can guarantee you that almost. Uh, kids love it. They, they tug on mom when they're in here constantly. Hey, we need to get more salt. We need to get more salt. They are afraid of not having enough salt. You need salt to make hydrochloric acid in your stomach. You have to have it. It's a vital nutrient. So start with salt. Half teaspoon, teaspoon, teaspoon and a half a day. Um, very, very important. Number two, hydrochloric acid. So salt helps you make it, but once you get older, you need more power in there usually. So this is the product called HCL Zyme. My new favorite by far for hydrochloric acid. Um, all live source, fantastic company, this US Enzymes. And this one's on the website as well so important. So how you take this one is towards the end of a meal. Let your body use up some of its stores of HCL. It's supposed to do that. But as we get older, and because of stress, from diet, from different factors in our life, toxins and things, our body starts producing less and less hydrochloric acid. So you want to give it more towards the end of the meal. Make that stomach contents more acidic. Help your body break down the hydrochloric acid in there or help your body break down the food with hydrochloric acid. HCL zyme is what you want. Take a capsule at the end of the meal, two, three, four, depends on how big you are and your weight. But especially with more heavier meals, uh, like a steak dinner, things like that, you want more power in there to fully break down that food and set the stage for a good digestion there on down. And the last one is called Digestzyme, same company is from the HCL uh, Zyme, US Enzyme. This one's called Digestzyme. 
digestive enzymes. So when you go to church and you have that potluck, uh, when you're having the steak, when you're having these other foods that, you know, these pe that, that people eat, they don't have enough enzymes in them. Enzymes come from your pancreas, they come from the food. Very, very, very important. So with this one, typically you take one or two capsules towards the beginning of a meal because you want to give your body the chance to break down that food. Those three things help set the stage for good digestion, right? Because we're talking about causes here. You have to have that at the beginning to help your, your body, to help your gallbladder work right. And again, uh, shoplarsonwellness.com is where you can find those. Again, I set that, that uh, site up for my patients, but um, it is freely open to anyone who wants to order these uh, amazing products. So again, Dr. Brant Larson, hope you learned something, and uh, I'll see you on another video.